Hello guys, this is Praveen from Appleosophy. Today I'm going to be taking you through the macOS Catalina Beta Developer Beta 1. And uh, I've used it extensively for the past few hours now. And I've been comparing it to macOS Mojave. I have a macOS uh, Catalina here on my left. And then I have Mojave here on my right. So I'm just going to take you through some of the features that I've tried out. There are some features that are not yet available to try. Uh, I'll mention those too. And also I'll mention some of the features that I haven't been able to try until now. So let's get right into it. So the first thing uh, I'd like to mention about macOS Catalina is the new music app. So you guys would know iTunes, iTunes is pretty famous. And in WWDC 2019, uh, Tim Cook started off by talking about the history of iTunes and talking about how uh, iTunes was uh, such a game changer for the music industry. And now it seems that iTunes is finally gone, it's dead, it's outdated, and it's been replaced by three new apps. So iTunes is replaced by three new apps, and the first one is the new Apple Music app. So if you look at my screen over here in uh, macOS Catalina, you can see the new uh, Apple Music app. It's pretty, uh, you know, the UI is very round. It's very in touch with iOS 12 and iOS 13 uh, user interface. We can see a For You tab right here. We can see Browse and um, we can see all these, uh, you know, new tabs. And the user interface basically matches uh, the iOS user interface. It's all clean. And this app is only for Apple Music. So it's not iTunes anymore. It's only for Apple Music. You can see I have my iPad connected here and we can access the songs on my iPad, but nothing else. So we can't sync data with the iPad. So you must be wondering, without iTunes, how am I supposed to sync my podcast? How am I supposed to sync audiobooks? How am I supposed to sync photos to uh, my iOS devices, your iPhones, your iPads? So there is a way to do that. And um, if we look at what Apple has done, uh, within the Finder application, so we all know Finder, you use it to, uh, it's our file browser basically. We find documents, uh, desktop, we find all the drives connected, external hard disks, CDs. So everything's in Finder and um, iCloud Drive. So over here in Finder, if we look at the screen again, uh, on the sidebar, we have a new tab and that's locations. So locations is basically your iOS devices, your iPhone, your iPad, whatever you connect shows up in locations. So if you see in my locations in Finder, uh, my iPad has showed up and you can see the music movies, podcasts, audiobooks. So this is the tab where I can uh, sync my files. I can do backups of my iOS devices. So all of that has been moved to Finder, the new location in Finder. So don't look for it in iTunes, it's in Finder now. And uh, the next change in uh, macOS Catalina, again, like iTunes is dead, it's replaced by three new apps. We just saw uh, Apple Music app, which, um, you know, it's all just Apple Music, your uh, music, your subscriptions. So next we have Apple TV and Apple TV again is a separate app. It's not anywhere included in iTunes. iTunes is gone. So here we have our library. We have all the movies that is available to watch. We have all our TV shows. We can purchase TV shows over here. We can, um, we, you know, we can rent them. We can do all that sort of stuff. Uh, there's watch now where you'll be given uh, suggestions and uh, all these uh, different, you know, movie, uh, news channels and we have Game of Thrones over here. We can subscribe to TV ch channels. So all of this stuff, um, you know, is in the Apple TV app. Another thing to note is Apple TV app on MacBook now supports 4K, HDR and Dolby Atmos, which is a very, very nice change. We have all the Apple TV channels. Uh, we have the home for Apple TV Plus, which will be coming out really soon once Apple TV Plus uh, is released. And then there's also a kids uh, tab. I'm not able to access it. I think my Apple ID uh, doesn't allow me to do that, but there is a kids tab. And also Apple uh, TV app was also getting multi-user support for the Apple, uh, you know, the Apple TV device. So the next thing, again, uh, that iTunes is divided into, we have Apple Music, we have Apple TV, and now there's podcasts. So podcast is now a separate app on macOS Catalina. And again, if we look at our podcast, um, app right here we have all my uh, podcasts that I've subscribed to we have a listen now tab and then we have a nice browse tab where we can go through uh, and discover new podcasts one of the greatest changes in podcasts for uh, Mac OS Catalina would be machine learning to uh, identify words within podcasts and we can use that to search so basically um, I don't need to uh, search for the name of the podcast channel I don't need to uh, search for the name of the podcast title uh, machine learning now identifies 
words within the podcast. And when I search using this powerful search bar here on the top left, I can search for words within the uh, the audio of the podcast, which makes it a much more powerful search engine. Again, this is powered by machine learning. And also there's a new uh, information tab over here where we get a description. Also in Apple Music, we get a description tab over here uh, where we get all our lyrics and um, um, based on the song that's been playing. So this is uh, iTunes. iTunes is separated into three uh, apps now. And let's move on to the next app. So the next biggest change to macOS Catalina would be the new Photos app. The Photos app is completely redesigned. It's more powerful. It has these new video memories now. And it also organizes your photos by year, month, and day in a much cleaner manner. So let's look into that. So if we look here on my uh, screen, we have the Photos app open. And we are in the Photos column in years right now. So if I click on a year, it will go into the months division. And again, you can see all these photos divided by month again. And by clicking on a month, I go into days. And you can just see the user interface is much more refined. It's much more clean and it's just so beautiful to look at. If you look at memories over here, I don't have any memories currently. There's uh, not enough photos in my library. Uh, I just took a few photos off of the Apple Newsroom website. But the new memories allow for video memories and um, more interaction with your photos. It just makes it much more beautiful to look at. And the photo previews are also much larger. You might have noticed right here, all these few photo previews much larger. There's a lot of less uh, of those huge empty gaps, which wasn't nice. Also, this the new Photos app uses machine learning on the Mac. Again, it uses, to, uses it to understand uh, who are in the photos and organizes them by people. And that's just done much more powerfully. And another thing is best shots. So uh, photo, Photos also intelligently goes through the library, finds out the best images and puts that on top. Again, uh, Apple's all about privacy and security. So all of this is done right on uh, the device. It's all on device processing. Nothing is sent into the cloud. So all our photos are safe and you know our privacy is not um, interrupted. So the next thing let's take a look at is the Notes app. So the Notes app again is also completely redesigned in macOS Catalina. We have these huge tabs right now. We have uh, ability to share folders. So if you look at the screen uh, on my MacBook, we can see this new gallery view. And in this gallery view, we can see the name of the folder that the, uh, the, the note is from. And we can see these large previews from uh, the note itself. And it just allows us for a more cleaner look. It gives this nice uh, feel that we can see what's in the notes without having to open up the note. And also notes also has a more powerful search engine. We can again uh, search through our notes much more faster and it's much easier. It goes into the details of the notes and the images when we're using the search engine. And also there's a view only collaboration now. So if I'm collaborating uh, with any of my notes, I can give view only permissions so the person who is collaborating with me doesn't have editing permissions. This wasn't there previously in the Notes app. And also there's a new checklist option. Uh, I haven't been able to get to that, but uh, there's a new checklist option. So you can check off notes that you've completed and uh, you can leave ones that you haven't completed unchecked. I think that's a really neat feature and it'll be really useful. So, and the next app that has been a redesign in macOS Catalina is the Reminders app. And this, Apple has said, has been redesigned from the ground up. Like it's been completely changed. It is nothing like the old Reminders app. And that is such a relief since the old Reminders app was, uh, it wasn't that good. It was, uh, no, it wasn't clean. It wasn't a good user interface. The new Reminders app, as you can see on my screen, is much more clean. It resembles iOS much more with its user interface. We have a today option. We have the scheduled option. We have all, we have flag. Again, very similar to iOS, how it would be in iOS 12, iOS 13. We, are, we can see all these different uh, lists over here. We have uh, reminders from iCloud. We have our local reminders from Reminders family. And also another really nice thing in Reminders app is if you can see on the bottom here, Reminders is now intelligent. It sorts, uh, it has Siri intelligence. So if I have, if I set a reminder to call someone tomorrow, it automatically sets that reminder for the next day. It doesn't have to, you don't have to specify the reminder at a certain time. It just automatically does all that which is very nice. It's, uh, it has uh, enhanced Siri intelligence. We can also add attachments to our reminders now, which is also really great. We can add photos and audio to our reminders. And there's also a new smart list. And what smart list does is it organizes reminders based on time, based on uh, 
you know, what's coming up next, and that's really useful. There's also a new group and task list. We can group lists together, which is really nice. And we, have a, uh, we can also customize our list appearances. Another great feature in Reminders is that if I remind myself to message someone tomorrow, whenever I'm messaging the person the next day, Reminders will automatically send me a reminder telling me to message that person regarding whatever I wanted to message them with. So this is a very nice feature. It intelligently tags contacts and reminders and reminds me whenever I'm communicating with that contact next, which is a really great feature. Next, let's talk about Safari. Now, Safari doesn't have a major UI redesign, but it does have some really nice changes that I'd like to go over. First thing is, if you look at uh, my screen over here, you can see that Safari has this new uh, redesigned start interface. Uh, we have uh, favorites, you know, the letters are much more bolded. We have frequently visited, and uh, I haven't used it much, but there's also going to be a uh, predictions based on Siri, so we'll have uh, much more frequently visited uh, sites over there. We'll also have Siri predictions for what I'd like to visit based on time, based on location, which is again very useful, you know, and everything's secure, everything's private, uh, just like Apple says. And uh, so that's about the start page. Another new feature in Safari is a bit on a, again based on privacy, based on security. So if I try to download uh, anything or if a website prompts me to download something and if it's a website that I haven't downloaded anything from before, Safari automatically gives me a prompt asking me if I want to allow the website for storage permissions. So if we look over here, I'm gonna attempt to download Google Chrome. So I'm gonna click on download Chrome and click on accept and install. So if you look at this, uh, before the download starts, Safari is asking me, do you want to allow downloads on google.com? So if I click allow, the, do uh, the download will begin, Google Chrome will begin a download. And then the next time I try to download something from google.com, it'll be automatically allowed again. And we can go into system preferences and we can remove these uh, permissions again. So it just gives us greater control over what uh, websites get our permissions to access data and access downloads. Another cool feature is apps that are built into macOS Catalina. Whenever they try to access file permissions, whenever they try to access desktop files, document files, iCloud Drive, we will again get a prompt from that app, uh, from uh, macOS Catalina asking, do you want to allow this app to access your files? So if I click on allow over here, if you see my screen, I'm clicking on allow and you can see my download begins. So, which is very cool and it's, you know, it's very nice. Apple's taking a really great stance on privacy and securing our data. Another cool feature of macOS Catalina is, um, well, it's not really a feature, it's more of a performance enhancement. So if you look at the YouTube app, uh, if you look at the YouTube website right now, I'm sorry, um, let's see, I'm, I'm playing this video. So if I wanna minimize this video, let me mute it. If I wanna minimize this video and uh, have it as a pop-up window, I could easily do that and it's much faster now in macOS Catalina. So if you look over here, I'm going to change it into a pop-up and wow, is that fast. That was really fast. And again, if I click on this again, it goes really fast. So before this wasn't as smooth as how it is now, it would lag, it would take some time. But now, as you see, I'm going to change it into a pop-up again. And wow, that's really smooth. That's really fast. It's never been this fast before. Mac OS Mojave, it's not as fast as this. This is really fast. It's a really great performance enhancement. So. The next feature I'd like to talk about in uh, macOS uh, Catalina is the uh, System Preferences app. So we all use System Preferences. We frequently, you know, change settings, change all that sort of stuff. So this is really nice UI redesign in System Preferences. If you look at this, we can change our profile image right over here by clicking on that. We can uh, see my name. We can see all the, uh, you know, what all the services that I've logged into using my account. By clicking on Apple account over here, I can uh, see an overview of my Apple account. I can see name, uh, password. I can look at uh, you know payment and shipping. I can look at all my uh, services that I've logged into, all the devices that I've logged into. So that's a really cool feature. That's you know very useful. And uh, there's also family sharing right on top over there if you want to access family sharing information. There's also screen time on uh, in system preferences now. So macOS now has screen time. Uh, I haven't had a chance to try it out yet because. Uh, my iOS devices haven't are not using the same Apple ID, but screen time basically you can use your Mac also to um, you know record screen time. You can see overall screen time. You can control the uh, limitations. You can set downtime. You can set uh, exceptions. So all the usual stuff that's there. 
again, everything's there the same screen time. Uh, really good, really useful. Finally on Mac OS. So the next and uh, final feature that I'm gonna show you in a uh, Mac OS Catalina here is uh, the QuickTime player. So the QuickTime player is a Apple built-in player. We use it to play videos. So the new QuickTime player allows for the pop-up window action, so picture in picture. And uh, before, you know, we would use picture in picture in uh, Safari, we'd use it for YouTube, we'd use it for Netflix. But now picture in picture is supported by QuickTime, which is a long overdue, but it's a really cool feature. And again, works really fast. Let me demonstrate that to you now. So I have this video right here, and if I open it in a QuickTime player, uh, by clicking on the pop-up uh, action over here, again, you can see it moves really quickly to the uh, pop-up window, and again, it's really smooth. If I try playing the video, Again, you can see that it's very smooth. You can see it transitions very quickly. So, okay, we've gone over all the features that are available to use on macOS Catalina. So there are a few features that are really, really cool, but they're not available to use in the first developer beta yet. And I'm gonna talk about those. So the first thing is Sidecar. So Sidecar is a feature that allows you to use your iPad as an external display to your Mac. And this is a very nice feature, so whenever you're traveling or you're going outside, you can't always take an external monitor with you. But if you have an iPad, you can use it wirelessly as an external monitor to your MacBook. So this feature isn't available yet to use. I've tried searching for it, but it says it's not available. So I'll just let you guys know when it comes available and then we can have a look at that. One of the cool parts about this feature is that we can use even the Apple Pencil as a touch input device to uh, you know, do precise uh, touch inputs to the uh, MacBook. And this is all using the iPad. And also, we can use it as an extended display, we can mirror the display, we can use continuity and markup documents, gestures. And one of the best parts of this feature sidecar is that if you have a MacBook without the touch bar, if you're using your iPad as an external display, you will get the option of the touch bar on the bottom of the display. So it's like bringing the touch bar to a non-touch bar model using the iPad, which is a really cool feature. And then a few apps already are, uh, are ready to support uh, Sidecar, and that's Adobe After Effects, we have Adobe Illustrator, we have Adobe Premiere Pro, Cinema 4D, DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Pro, uh, Maya, and like, you know, there are a lot of other cool apps, Painter, and all these are ready to support uh, uh, the iPad with uh, Sidecar as an external display. All these apps support the Apple Pencil, Sidecar isn't available to use yet, but it will be coming out soon, and we'll let you guys know about that. And then regarding security in macOS Catalina, macOS Catalina apparently runs in a dedicated read-only system volume. So it's separate from your other data and nothing else happens. Another thing which is really nice about macOS Catalina is user space system extensions. So what this allows you to do is all these uh, software, like all these heavy uh, apps, use code that run directly on the Mac OS system. But now Mac OS Catalina runs them in a separate space so that even if something wrong happens to the app, it won't affect the operating system. So this was actually recently brought out in a Windows update called Windows Sandbox. And this came out about a week or two ago. And again, this was also a feature which allows you to isolate uh, apps running on a separate volume so they don't affect the actual operating system. So Windows has this feature, Mac OS, just got it, you know, it's a really good feature and it's really gonna protect the integrity of your operating system. There's also an enhanced gatekeeper, so that'll ensure that the apps you install uh, don't have any security issues and stuff like that. There's also new data protections in macOS Catalina, and there's a new activation lock. So activation lock is only available with uh, Macs with the T2 security uh, chip inside, and this basically, you know, if you uh, activate activation lock through iCloud, your MacBook will be unavailable to even boot up unless you remove the activation lock. So this is a really good feature. Nobody can access your MacBook if you don't want them to. And regarding uh, accessing your MacBook, if your MacBook is stolen, uh, you know, unfortunately, and you're unable to find it, if you use Find uh, My Mac, uh, which is now called Find My, we'll get back to that. So if you use Find My Mac to try to find your MacBook, you need to be connected to the network or some sort of internet connection to be able to find the location. 
But now, uh, Mac OS Catalina does not require you to connect to the internet connection. So there's this new feature in Mac OS Catalina, which allows your MacBook to act as a Bluetooth beacon. So what this does is if your MacBook is stolen and it's still switched on, even though it's not connected to the internet, it will act as a Bluetooth beacon to all other Apple devices nearby. And those devices will relay the location of your MacBook to Apple servers right back to you in Find My. So this is a really cool feature. You do not need an internet connection to be able to trace your MacBook anymore. So no Apple devices actually require an internet connection now to be able to track them down, which is a really nice feature. This also does not use any extra internet from the devices which are nearby trying to locate your MacBook or any other Apple device, which is a really cool feature. Another thing that I didn't mention is there's a new app called Find My. It replaces Find My iPhone slash Find My Mac and Find My Friends. So this is now combined together in one app called Find My. Uh, Find My is available, we have it on the MacBook, but whenever I try to open it, it keeps crashing. So there's something wrong. Again, this is developer beta one. And by the time uh, Mac OS uh, Catalina releases eventually, uh, we can expect it to be pretty stable. The last macOS Catalina feature I'd like to talk about is the ability to share iCloud Drive folders. So previously, if you use Google Drive a lot, you know that you could create folders, you can turn on link sharing, copy the link, send it to anyone, and they can access that folder. Until now, you couldn't share anything in iCloud Drive except individual documents, individual uh, pages, individual notes. Now you can share an entire folder. You can create a folder within I iCloud Drive. You can put documents and data inside that folder and you could turn on link sharing for that folder and share with anyone with an Apple device and they can access that folder. And this is a really cool addition to iCloud Drive. It allows you to do more with your storage and it's actually justifying the uh, purchase of you know buying additional iCloud storage. If you guys like this video, please subscribe, do like, do comment down below what your favorite feature is. Uh, you know, follow Appleosophy on Twitter, follow Appleosophy on Instagram. You can go to www.appleosophy.com and we have all the latest tech uh, uh, news and rumors, everything related to Apple. And uh, if you guys uh, want to see more videos uh, on uh, reviews on software, iOS, watchOS, do let us know and we'll do that. And uh, thank you for watching.